Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to this broadcast of the worship service from First United Methodist Church in Freeport, Illinois. We pray that this program will be a blessing to you. May you feel God's presence with you as you listen to this worship service. Good morning to you all. Welcome to the On the Air Worship Service for First United Methodist Church of Freeport, Illinois. I'm Pastor Natasha Gardner, the pastor at First UMC. We are located on the corner of Galena Avenue and Lily Creek Road, across from the ComEd Station. Our music is provided by music director Del Lore, choir director Michelle Stubby, and various musicians and singers. Please join us every Tuesday at 10.30 a.m. for our weekly Bible study. You can join us for live worship transmitted to the church parking lot every Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m. by tuning your radio to 100.1 FM. And also hear us on WFRL 1570 a.m. at 11.30 a.m to listen to a one week delayed broadcast of our worship service. If you have any prayer requests, please feel free to share them with us by calling the church at 815-232-6210 and follow the Freeport First United Methodist Church on Facebook and YouTube. And now let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a four days, the glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story. come bow our heads and join together as we pray. Gracious and loving God, this is your day, a day set aside for our love and our care and our support for you and for all people everywhere. We pray, Heavenly Father, for this nation whom we just mentioned 
in the fact that we are going through a very rough time. And we need your constant care and your constant watching. Because, Father, we cannot do this on our own. We just cannot. But, Heavenly Father, with the knowledge that you are there, there is nothing that we cannot do. And I believe that firmly. So, Father, be with all of us as we pray for this plague. We give you thanks, Heavenly Father, for the young ones who are here today because they are an essential part of who this congregation is and what this congregation will become. Bless not only the kids, but also bless mom and dad. The ones who have sleepless nights and worried filled days, watch with them as they go through this time, even as we come close to the beginning of school again. We give you thanks again, Father, for them and for their lives and for our role in their lives. Now, Father God, we would also ask your blessing upon those who are older, let's say, than those children. Father, we also need your care. We need your love and your watching. For in many ways, Heavenly Father, we are as weak as they. But then again, we always have been. We just haven't always recognized it. Watch over us and care for us, Heavenly Father, and keep us safe. Be with our pets, those whom we love and watch over, those whom we tend and care for, those whom we feed, and those whom we seek care for. They are a part of your kingdom too, Father God, and we ask that that blessing will be poured onto us. We ask your blessing upon all those whose names we have mentioned. You know their specific needs and specific causes for this day. Watch over them now, Heavenly Father. Keep them safe. Keep them within the hollow of your hand. We thank you that Kay has returned after all of our prayers from weeks. We know, Heavenly Father, that there are others out there that are in just the same need that she is. So we ask, Heavenly Father, that you would give to them the same kind of care that you've given to her. Now, with the confidence of children, we pray to you, Heavenly Father, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This morning's scripture reading is from Galatians, the fifth chapter. For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. For you were called to freedom, brothers and sisters. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence, but through love become enslaved to one another. For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. If, however, you bite and devour one another, take care that you are not consumed by one another. Live by the Spirit, I say, and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. For what the flesh desires is opposed to the Spirit, and what the Spirit desires is opposed to the flesh. For these are opposed to each other, to prevent you from doing what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not subject to the law. Now the works of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality impurity, debauchery, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, anger, quarrels, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. I am warning you, as I warned you before, those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things, and those who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh with his passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. 
the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. There was a man who was driving his Harley. You know what a Harley is? A Harley motorcycle. He was driving his Harley down California Beach. And suddenly a great cloud came over the top of him. And a voice came booming out. And it said, because you have been tried and been found faithful to me in so many ways, I will grant you one wish. Well, the biker pulled over and said, okay, build me a bridge from here to Hawaii so I can go over there anytime I want to. Well, the Lord responded back, your request is very materialistic. Think of the enormous challenges for that kind of an undertaking. The supports required reaching to the bottom of the Pacific and the concrete and the steel that it would take to do such a thing. It will nearly exhaust several of the natural resources. Now, I can do it. But it's hard for me to justify your desire for worldly things. Take a little more time. Think of something that could possibly help mankind. Well, the biker began to think and think, and he thunk and he thunk. He said, Lord, you're right. It is too much. Rather, I wish that I and all mankind could understand women. I want to know how she feels inside, what she's thinking when she gives me that silent treatment, why she cries, what she means when she says, nothing's wrong, why she snaps and complains when I try to help, and how I can make a woman truly happy. The Lord thought and thought. He thunk and he thunk. He replied, was that two lanes on that bridge or was it four? <laughs> Some of you saw my tie today. You pointed it out. What is the figure on there? Anybody remember? It's Oscar the Grouch. Yeah, Oscar the Grouch. Some of you are probably a little bit too old. I didn't grow up with Sesame Street, but some of you may be young enough to remember Sesame Street with your own kids and are working with your kids and introducing them to some Sesame Street. There's one figure there, Oscar the Grouch. And in the early days of Sesame Street, Jim Henson and John Stone, Sesame Street's director, would meet to work in a Manhattan restaurant. And the name of that restaurant is Oscar's Cavern. And they had a waiter there that the first time they went in was just horrible. I mean, he embarrassed them. He attacked them. He was just downright mean, and not only to himself, but to the other workers who were working in that restaurant. He was just a grouch. And so... Oscar was born, and every week, Jim and John would go back to that same restaurant and would listen to the complaints of this Oscar so that they could pattern new things for Oscar to do and say. But how would you like for your attitude to be the attitude that was portrayed on a children's program to try to teach the opposite behavior. I think that would be downright embarrassing, and, and I think that's probably something that they wanted to do. The characteristics of the followers of Jesus, the fruit of the Spirit is, say it with me, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. How many of you think you've already got that? I don't mean a part of it. I mean the whole thing. How many of you think you have it? How many of you think you're working on it? Uh huh. How many of you trying to do it on your own? If we're married, 
or you have someone you're close to, you're not doing it on your own. Believe me, they're helping you do it. We are here to celebrate God's gift. And the gift that we're getting is the gift of the Spirit. Within us, everybody is looking for that sense of peace, aren't we? Don't you wish you had that peace of Christ living in your soul all the time? Don't you wish you weren't worried about all the things that are going on? Dell and I were talking. Dell, are you worried about what's going on? Yeah. And I think many of us are. But if we had the peace of Christ in us, really in us, I don't think we would. That is an important part of who we are. So if these are the characteristics, let's do it one more time. How many times do you have to preach something before it gets in your head? Seven times? Oh, we maybe just get there. The fifth fruits of the Spirit are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. If we have those things, it's not because they are ours. We all have a hole right about here in the middle of our chest where our heart was supposed to be. And you feel around for it. That hole that is there is the spirit of Jesus Christ. See, we oftentimes as Christians look for the peace that is in the world and we don't find it. And we blame God for everything else. And we blame the world for not giving us this peace. And we blame our spouse. And we blame our kids. And the whole world is, well, not very nice. Because there's that hole right there. And what fills that hole? The Spirit of Jesus Christ. That is the thing that we have to have. That's the thing that's going to give us the satisfaction that we're looking for. There's a cute little thing. Fortune magazine. There's a, a couple of things that I'm going to re read them here because I forget them. I want to quote them to you. Here are some things that applicants for jobs wrote on their applications. Ready for this? One said, it is best for employers that I not work with people. Got that? Best for employers that I not work with people. Would you hire somebody like that? No? How about this one? I become completely paranoid, trusting completely no one and absolutely nothing. Sound like an applicant you'd really want to hire? I don't think so either. <laughs> Even if it's just as a volunteer. Boy, put that in the church, will you? I don't think so. I don't think so. Here's another one. What are your personal interests? What are your hobbies? And one person wrote, donating blood. 14 gallons so far. That's a hobby? I mean, it's a nice activity, but a hobby? I don't think we're going to require somebody or judge them by how many gallons of blood they've given. How about this one? Please don't misconstrue the 14 jobs as job hopping. I've never quit a job. And that means, I guess, that they've been fired from 14 <laughs> jobs. Do you want to hire that person? And how's this one? The company made me a scapegoat, just like the previous three. Now, there are some attitudes that we just don't want. We agree with me on that? There are some attitudes we just don't want. With ourselves, with others. I don't know about you, but if I'm an employer, I'm looking for someone who has those faint little skills up there, the, the love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. I want that. I want that in that person that I'm going to hire, and I also want that in somebody that I'm going to spend my life with. I want my spouse to be someone who has that kind of an attitude, who has that hole filled with the peace of Jesus Christ. It's important that I do that. Some of us are born with these gifts. Most of us are not. We agree with me on that? 
Have you ever known anybody who's had all those characteristics? I hope so. You've had some pretty good pastors in this church, and they have really tried to lead you. You have some other staff of this church who show those kinds of expenses, and they bring that all because they have them. They may have filled that hole. The rest of us have to work on it. I don't have them. Not yet. I'm trying to work on them. Check out which ones I'm minus by asking my, my spouse or my daughter. I'm sure they can tell you which ones it is. Patience? Maybe not the utmost skills that I have. And there's some others too. But we need to work on them. And here's how I want you to work on them. I want you to do this by bowing your heads for a moment and say a prayer with me. Will you do that? Bow your head. Heavenly Father, bring me your Holy Spirit and let it live in me forever. Amen. Did you catch that prayer? I want you to practice that prayer every day. If you say a prayer at dinner, don't just say, thank you for the food, amen. Or like we used to say, good bread, good meat, good God, let's eat. None of that kind of stuff. But think about asking God into your heart. That's the best gift that you can give to God and the best giving. Not just for the food, but for Christ to live inside of you. And if you do that, watch what you do. Watch what you show Watch what you give to the world. Some of you remember a guy by the name of Bob Schuler. I knew people who knew Bob Schuler. Because Bob Schuler's first church was in Ivanhoe, Illinois. And I lived in Ivanhoe, Illinois. And I knew his church. I had a very, very good friend, and her parents were members of Bob Schuler's church. And they had some interesting things to say about Bob Schuler. They didn't think that Bob Schuler was all that great in Illinois. But as soon as he left Illinois and he went to California, he found his niche. And there, Bob Schuler could be Bob Schuler. This whole iconic image of positive thinking. Does positive thinking work? Yeah, it does. If you look at somebody and you see them as being positive, it's amazing. They will be positive. And if you find a problem with them, they will always be a problem. Bob Schuler had a very interesting childhood. He was one of seven kids. Can you imagine seven kids today? How many do you have? Four. Want seven? <laughs> seven may be just a little bit too much. But that's what Bob Schuler had. And they all had their own jobs. Now, he was raised on a farm. And you have to remember, he was born in the 1920s, I believe. So there were a few more kids and a few more jobs that there weren't appliances for. So Bob Schuler would, every morning, have to go out and bring the milk in. Every morning, he had to sweep the sidewalks. He'd have to take out the trash. He'd have to walk the dog. That all had to be accomplished between 7 o'clock and 7.55. At 7.55, Mom set the table, and by 8 o'clock, the whole breakfast was gone. You know, you have that many kids, and they're all working, and they all had the same number of tasks, they're all hungry, they all ate. And there's just enough time before they had to get to school for dad to have a short devotion. And then he had this little saying he wanted them to say to one another. And this is what that saying was. I'm going to be happy today, though the skies may be cloudy or gray. No matter what may come my way, I'm going to be happy today. Think of that determination. Do you say anything like that in the morning? Be honest with me. Do you say anything like that? And we wonder why the day looks so crummy. 
Taking a positive attitude can change some things. I'm going to be happy today. Say that. I'm going to be happy today. Though the skies be cloudy or gray, no matter what's going to come my way, I'm going to be happy today. You see, the fruit of the Spirit isn't dependent upon what's going on out there. It's not all sunshine and everything going along well and the weather's working right and the rain's coming at the right time. And it's not the equipment always working or the staff around me making me happy. It's not up to somebody else to make me happy. Who's going to make me happy? I am. And how am I going to start by getting happy? By thinking that I'm going to be happy. Making a determination. I'm going to be happy today. So, no wonder Bob Shuler then became so famous for what he does and what he did. That's the great part of it. I want you to notice that in that little saying, it wasn't dependent upon anybody else. It just happened. It's dependent upon me, my attitude, and what's not going to happen to me is what I'm not going to let happen to me. I'm not going to be angry about things. I asked this of Dell, and Dell never heard of this guy. And the last time I preached this, I mentioned this guy's name, and a couple of people, oh yeah, I know. How many of you have ever heard of Ronan Tynan? Anybody? Ronan Tynan is Irish. That's amazing in itself, right? Anybody here Irish? Any Irish blood in the congregation? Well, that's why nobody ever heard of him. Ronan is known for a couple of things. He was a great Irish tenor. He stood six foot four while he was born to be six foot four. He was a medical doctor. He won four gold medals during the Paralympics. And the four contests that he won were discus, you know, discus is a little plate underneath your arm, spinning around, you let it go. That's discus. Shot put. Anybody ever do shot put in school? It's like a cannonball. You stick it underneath here. As far as you can. That, and he won several medals in broad jumping and track. Now, I mentioned that he was six foot four. That was before he had his legs amputated below his knees. And all the things that he accomplished, he accomplished after his bottom of his legs were amputated. Can you imagine doing a discus or a shot put or doing a broad jump with only the top part of your legs and not the bottom? And he did it without any of the... Uh, things that we see today, no kind of adaptations for his handicap. He was an amazing man, but that wasn't all he did. He had his legs adjusted to be able to ride horses, to be an equestrian rider. He's a very accomplished equestrian rider. In fact, one of the riders for horses talked about the riders and everything else. Asked him, Ronan, how tall are you really? And he looked at the guy and sort of winked and he said, I'm adjusted. Don't you love that? That's an attitude that I can live with. That's an attitude I wish I always had. I'm adjustable. I can get through this. God has given me all kinds of wonderful things. Can any of you think of anything that God has given you? Anybody? Anybody think of anything that God has given you? None of you? How many of you think, come on, raise your hands. If I got my hand up, that means you got to get your hand up. How many of you think you can name one thing that God has given you? Oh, I hope so. I hope so. Is that important? Yes. It's important for you to have that footing. Like Ronan was, I have to have a footing, with a wink in his eye, before I can jump. Footing. Didn't have any feet but he had to have a footing before he could jump. Notice he's trusting in God. He's trusting in God's love, God's care, and God's wisdom. 
There is a wisdom in the things that happen to us. We don't always know what happened. We don't have to agree with them. What we have to do is we have to accept them and then go with that from there. That is part of who we are. Now, with the Spirit comes greatness. Greatness in who we are. Not because we can do it on our own, but because we are filled with the Spirit that allows us to do it. And it has nothing to do with the things we think it does. Motivational speakers like to use this one little thing, and it's sort of a cute little trick. You take the letters of the alphabet, A, B, C, D, and then you give them a numerical equivalent. A is one, B is two, C is three. Are you following me? And you try to figure out now from these words, what is going to make the most to you in your life? Hard work. How many of you believe that hard work is going to get you everywhere you need to go? It's going to help, but it's going to get you everywhere you want to go. If you put it together, 98 points. Is that pretty good? I would think 98 points is pretty good. How about the next one? Knowledge. Knowledge is 96. Knowledge isn't as good as hard work. Would you agree with that? Knowledge isn't as good as hard work. You know what I'm going to say next, don't you? Attitude. Yeah. If you're going to get somewhere, it's not with knowledge. It's not with hard work. It's with your attitude. If you come at something with a good attitude, then your hard work will pay off. If you come at it with the right attitude, your knowledge is going to pay off. And I thought that would be the end of it. Then someone brought up, you know, it can do just one step further. Love of God. The love of God gives you 101 points. Now, think about this for a second. Is that really possible in our world? Can you get 101%? You hear coaches say, I want you to go out there and give 120%. Is that physically possible? No, it isn't. Ask a football player to give 120% and they'll laugh at you. I'm giving what I can give. But because we have who in the middle? The love of Christ in the middle. We can then do that. We can get 101% with all the other things. But all those other things don't amount to everything. But the love of God does. I've seen people who are on their deathbed. When I was in Morrison, there was a lady who was 102, going to be 103. She passed away while I was serving there. And people around her, not just her family, but people around her would say, that lady gave everything she had. And somebody said, no, she gave more than what she had. She had that love of God. She loved God so much. And even though she couldn't do anything but lay in bed for the last several years, Sparkle in her eyes, chipper tone that she had, and the way she treated people with that wonderful attitude, there is some real grace there in the love of Christ. Amen. I mentioned Morrison Church. Morrison is the church which Pastor Cal left from here to go serve. And he needed a little bit of a break before he was going to his next parish, so I filled in for him there. And when I was leaving that church, I gave a grace. And the grace ended with the terms, may you go in peace and not in pieces. Know that if you have Christ in your heart with the joy, love, peace, all those gifts inside, if you have them, you will have that whole person held together.
Go now in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You have been listening to the worship service from First United Methodist Church in Freeport, Illinois. We invite you to join us each Sunday morning. We are located at the corner of U.S. Business Route 20 and Lily Creek Road, just west of Freeport. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.